Hey guys, Ivan here, and we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates in this video. First of all, as you can see, we are starting with a physique update of Andrew Jacked. And as you can see, he went to Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in New York. Steve Weinberger, the head judge in IBB Pro League, is checking him out. And you guys know that Andrew is doing Texas Pro again this year. Uh, he's going to be competing against Hunter Labrada, and that's going to be an amazing battle. I can't wait to see that one. That's probably the show that I'm most excited about this year, aside from the Mr. Olympia. It seems like Hunter is bringing something much better, and Andrew Jack is probably going to be better. Now, from his updates, from his videos and the photos such as this one, do I see some kind of crazy improvements? Not really. Before we continue with Andrew Jack, I just want to introduce to you guys Vintage Burst. This is for you people who don't enjoy uh, strong pre-workouts. You don't want a lot of coughing, you want some good pump, good connection with the muscle, good focus in the gym and a little bit of caffeine, and as you can see, a whole bunch of plant extracts, a lot of great natural ingredients to really make your pump better, make your focus better, it's gonna feel amazing, and it's really low steam, so, Anno Reactor, Vintage Burst, there is the link down below in the caption of this video that will lead you to the Old School Labs website, and guys, make sure to use the code DIVAN if you wanna help me out and get yourself a 15% discount, thank you guys. Now off to Andrew Jacked. I don't think he's much different from last year or the year before. I think he looks pretty similar muscularity-wise. But here's the thing, here's the catch. Last year, actually this year, prior to Arnold Classic, he started working with Chris Aceto like, I don't know, six, eight weeks out of Arnold. And at the same time, he started training with Psycho Fitness Lewis. So that was one major change that he implemented like only six to eight weeks before the show. And he did look probably more conditioned than ever. Chris Aceto is known for bringing the best, the absolute best conditioning out of his athletes. And uh, yeah, and sure, Andrew did bring his best conditioning up to date. But was it his best peak ever? I would say no. I think George Ferra did much better job with Andrew at the Texas Pro last year. But he kind of failed at the Arnold Classic UK and the Mr. Olympia. We never saw that version of Andrew Jack again like he was at Texas. So compared to the Arnold Classic UK and compared to the Mr. Olympia, Andrew Jack was better at the Arnold. And Chris Asit only had like a month and a half to try to bring the best out of Andrew Jack, but that's not enough time. Now, however, from the Arnold to Texas, there is enough time to figure out his body, to make the terrain the way he likes it, to prepare it, to have everything nice and ready in time, and to pick him. So I'm expecting Andrew to pick much better, to bring better fullness with similar conditioning from Arnold, and to just look much better than ever before. Like, I expect him to be better than he was at Texas when he won the show and burst into the scene and became the new big thing. And now, is he gonna fulfill his maximum potential at this year's Texas? We'll see, but I'm feeling pretty confident that we're gonna see something much, much improved. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to beat Hunter Labrada, but I think it will. Yeah, I know, on paper, Hunter is a better bodybuilder, he placed 4th at the Olympia, he beat Andrew by one spot last year, and it seems like he's gonna be improved as well. People are saying he looks much better in person than he does uh, on Instagram photos and videos, and uh, yeah, we all can see that he started eating real food instead of having protein shakes all day long. So also, Hunter is gonna be probably improved, but Andrew is gonna be much improved as well, so once again, it's going to be a close battle. It's going to be a good battle. Who do I think is going to win? Ooh, it's really tough to say. It's really tough to say. But yeah, I think most people will agree that Andrew is probably going to win. But you never know, man. Here is another shot of Andrew Jack that we got from the same spot at the same gym. Uh, in the background, you can see again Steve Weinberger and Andrew's coach, Chris Asito. And this is Andrew flexing his back. Now, I am assuming that Steve Weinberger told him how to position himself in this pose. I think his posing is better here, and that's one of the reasons why his back is actually looking thicker, right? I mean, his elbows are positioned lower, 
And um, I think that the, the, the angle between his uh, forearms and arms is a little bit smaller. I would like to see it even more closed in. I think that would make his back look better because he has really long arms. And when he's flat, especially, his arms look a little bit stringy, especially his forearms. So I would like to see him close that angle even, even more. Uh, but yeah, I like what he did with his uh, elbows. He, he lowered them a little and I think it makes his back look thicker. And I'm guessing he improved his back a little. I mean, maybe he had a good rebound. I don't know how much of that muscle will hold. But if Chris Asito knows what he's doing, and I believe he knows really, really well what he's doing, uh, it will hold. Look at what Sharchev did with uh, Samson. After each show, uh, Samson had great rebounds and he would just blow up like crazy. And everybody was like, it's a new muscle, it won't stick, but it always sticks because Milos knows what he's doing. And I believe Chris Sito also does. We'll see, maybe he doesn't. Maybe uh, Andrew's body is different, I don't know. But it looks like he improved that back. And that was a major flaw. Back and his hamstrings. And also like conditioning in the lower, uh, in the lower body from behind. So if he changes that, if he's a little bit thicker in the back and he shows more separation in the glutes and hamstrings, it will be definitely enough to win the Texas Pro and to potentially place in the top 5, top 4, top 3 maybe even at the Olympia. It looks good. Right now it looks good. I spoke about this before. I said multiple times that I would prefer to see Andrew have a proper long off season to really make significant improvements. But it seems like he is doing a good job, even like this, from show to show. And he wants to compete, so yeah, let him do it. I mean, Samson made a lot of progress from show to show, competing twice a year. Maybe Andrew can do the same thing, we'll see. But as for now, he looks good. I gotta say, he looks improved. Maybe just the angle, the lighting, something like that. But I think he did improve. And I think he's gonna look really, really good at Texas. Can't wait to watch that show. That's gonna be probably the best show of the year after Olympia and the Arnold. Alright, the next update is really, really interesting. It's good Guido at 9 weeks out of his pro debut. I'm not sure exactly which show he's doing, if you guys know, let us know down below in the comment section, I will pin the comment, but uh, it's in 9 weeks, and Olympia is in 17 weeks, so whichever show he does, it might qualify him for the Olympia. I heard it's gonna be one of the European shows, uh, that's all I know, uh, but I'm not sure which one, but it's gonna happen in 9 weeks, and this is his current condition. And every time we see this guy, every time we see an update, he looks better and better. And look at the conditioning right now. I mean, look at the glutes, look at the, look at the lag, the side lag, and just everything, really. I don't think he was ever disconditioned at nine weeks out. For nine weeks out, this is freaky, man. And he is not exactly known for conditioning. He never was really in super good shape on stage, but he always won all the shows on size because he had way, way, way more size than anybody in amateurs where he was competing before. Even when he was fighting for that pro car, he didn't really have to go crazy with conditioning. He won uh, that, that pro qualifier with mass because he's just so much bigger than everybody else than any other amateurs, and of course, he's not an amateur anymore, he, was, he wasn't supposed to be an amateur for a couple of years now, and uh, he looks like one of the like top 10 Olympians, I mean, I just don't see how this guy will place out of top 10 at the Olympia, I mean, yeah, I know, he's new, and we don't know yet, he still hasn't been battle-tested, we still have to see him against the other top pros, but from like what I'm seeing, from all the, the photos that he's posting, I don't see why he couldn't be top 10 or even higher than that. Like, who looks better than him in this side chest, for example? I think I can name maybe like 7-8 guys, tops, and that's about it. Check this pose as well. Like, look at the quads. I mean, look at how much his quads are flaring out. It's ridiculous. And then look at the lats and look at, look at, the, look at the abs, the depth in the abs, and also the waist size. So the most, the, the, the absent eye, sorry, also looks really freaking impressive. It looks kind of like Nick Walker, but with much, much more sweepy legs, with much more sweepy quads, with much better lateral outer head. Nick Walker, I don't know what he's doing, he's growing, he's much heavier, but his legs are looking really flat. And compare it to this, just look at this comparison right here. 
Look at the legs. Look at the legs. I mean, night and day difference, right? I, I don't know what Nick Walker is doing. I mean, again, 290 with this conditioning and uh, legs looking still super flat, super small compared to his upper body. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what he's doing wrong. I don't think it's a training. I believe, yeah, he's limited structurally for sure. But like, uh, he grew, he gained muscle. So where is that muscle? Well, I'm guessing he's not prioritizing his legs. I, I guess he's just growing everything at the, same, at the same pace. So he grew his upper body and he grew his legs and he has the same proportions like he had at the Arnold. He's just bigger. And I don't think that's a good plan. I mean, he's just, he's big enough in the upper body. He doesn't need more muscle in the upper body, but he does need bigger legs. He needs to let those legs catch up with his upper body because look at his comparison. I mean, he will be exposed on stage by guys like this with really good wheels. I mean, I'm not saying that Good Duito is going to beat Nick Walker on stage, but honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised. It's not impossible. I mean, we can't really predict something like that because we never saw this guy against any pro. But based on the photos and all the updates, and there is so many of them, he always looks super impressive. Even on stage, he looks really good. The back is something that is arguable, but when I saw this photo, man, I can't say this is a bad back. I can't say it's a bad back. It's, it's maybe a little bit worse in the back double, I don't think it is super wide. I think for some reason it's kind of narrow. Uh, I wouldn't say he is structurally narrow. I don't think his shoulders are narrow. I just think he needs more lats. I think he needs more muscle in the lats to make him wider. But because of his shoulder width, when he spreads the lats, when he spreads the back, when he opens his scapula, uh, uh, like he's doing right here, he has width in the back lat spread. And I guess that's the reason why he didn't post a photo of his back double, because I think it's not looking that good, but it's only one pose and it's not that bad. So I think this guy is going to win a pro show. I'm not sure which show it's going to be, but it's in nine weeks. So I think most of the top uh, European pros are going to get their qualification already at that time. And the competition won't be that fierce at that point. So he's probably going to win a pro card no matter what. And uh, then at the Olympia, if he does Olympia this year, where can he place? You guys tell me, but... Like, from what I saw so far, I wouldn't be too surprised if he showed up and he placed in the top 10. Because that's how impressive he looks. To me, at least. Whatever you guys think, let me know down below. And also, we got a physique update of Keon Pearson, who is getting shredded, who is getting jacked lately. And you guys know he's been coached by Patrick Tour, and lately Patrick Tour has been actually doing a pretty good job with his athletes. For example, Stanimal... He really picked that guy really well. He managed to place in the top three at Orlando Pro. Uh, in his captions, he's, he's posting these photos in the videos, uh, saying that he was uh, in a battle for the second spot against Hassan Mustafa. We all know that's not true. Uh, for the first, it was a battle between Hassan and Phil Klahar. Uh, Stanimil was in, in firm third spot, but he looked really good. That was his absolute best ever. And Patrick Tour did a great job with picking him. He was super condition and super full this was absolute best version of Stanimal so far and placing third in a, in a good pro show is a really good success I, I'm really amazed Laszlo Kirali also won his uh, classic physique pro show and uh, he is a really uh, promising classic physique athlete uh, Patrick Tour has been doing a really good job with his athletes and now I think he's going to do really well with Keon, I believe, of course, he's going to win uh, a show and qualify for the Olympia and what he's going to do at the Olympia I don't think he's ready yet to win, to beat Sean Clarida, no, but I don't know, best case scenario, top three, it's possible, we'll see. Uh, this guy has been making a lot of progress year after year, and now he's getting more conditioned, but there is one thing that was also progressing over the years, and it's not a good thing, it's the gap between his abs. The gap has been getting wider and wider. What is the cause of this? Personally, I have no idea, just like I don't know what is happening with Ian Valier's chest, why is it getting separated, but as you can see, it's definitely happening. Look at that gap. It was not this wide a year ago. You probably remember that Ronnie Coleman had the same issue, a lot of other bodybuilders as well. 
And apparently it's happening with Kian Pearson as well. Thank God he's not doing classic anymore. Because in classic this wouldn't fly. This wouldn't... Uh, this couldn't be ignored. Uh, having abs like this... Look at this. No, no. In classic aesthetics are really important. And uh, this kind of a flaw would really cost him quite a few of those spots. And I don't know if this is fixable. I don't know if this is reversible. I mean, it's not like a hernia where you can get a surgery and just fix it so easily. No, I, I don't know. I have no idea what can he do about this. Maybe something with training could help. Maybe he's not training his ab. I have no idea. I can only guess. So yeah, the conditioning is good. The muscularity looks improved, but that gap is really worrying me. But I guess in 212, it's not going to be that much of an issue. As long as it doesn't get much worse. If it does, I, I don't know. I don't know how bad can it get. But if it is any wider than this, it can definitely throw off the judges. It's throwing off. It's throwing me off for sure. Whatever you guys think, let me know down below in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Why is this happening? What could be the reason? And if you have experience when the, with this, uh, is it reversible? Can it be changed? I don't know. Personally, I don't think so. I haven't really seen anybody reverse it. But you guys tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. And once again, guys, if you want to support me and this channel, there is the link down below in the caption of this video. It's going to lead you to the Old School Apps website. You just pick your product and make sure to use the code EVAN. That's all, guys. Thank you so much. All the best and bye-bye.